Hi, and welcome to video, where we take a look at image formation and the digital representation of images. So firstly, how do computers see? Well, firstly, and can they see? Imagine you're a computer and you have an advanced artificial intelligence robot and you're able to basically identify a motorbike out of a cluttered scene like this and even identify the model. Now that's pretty cool and that's far from how computer vision or computers actually see because computers don't see like how we do. How we see is extremely good. The human brain has a magnificent, amazing capacity to see and visually understand what is being seen. We can identify hundreds of thousands of objects in one photo or what our eyes see immediately, quickly and get context. This is what makes us humans so intelligent and so capable, our vision. And that's why our brain is actually vastly, a lot of our resources in our brain are dedicated to vision. But how do computers see? Because computers don't see the world like this at all. This is what they see, just a bunch of raw numbers streaming from a camera sensor or an image file or video file. And it's just going to be different numbers representing blue, green, and red, perhaps as one of the color spaces. And we'll learn about color spaces soon. But imagine you're a computer and you're seeing this. Now, this is very hard to make sense of. And that's what the goal of computer vision actually is. Now let's stop here and think about something. What exactly are images? Or what is vision, I can ask? What is this light? What are these colors? What are these things we're actually seeing or they're coming to our eyes? Well, it's basically the two-dimensional representation of the visible light spectrum. And you may remember this from your high school physics class, that the EMS, electromagnetic spectrum, has all the different waves here of various wavelengths. You can see from largest wavelength to smallest wavelength, which is gamma rays. And the visible light spectrum is part of this EMS. And this is it right here. You can actually see, we can go, it goes from invisible to dark red. Red is the longest wavelength, blue is the shortest wavelength here. And you can actually see it right here as it goes. We can actually see the colors actually, this would be the shorter wavelength here, this kind of pink indigo color right here. And now this is basically what we see. This is the light spectrum. And combining different colors here gives us complex images like this, or basically anything comprised of different colors in the electromagnetic spectrum. And that's what makes vision cool. It's just a reflection of different light waves from objects that are coming to our eyes. And it gives us these colors. And this is what images essentially are. So now let's move on to how are images seen digitally. So computers store images in a variety of formats. However, they all involve mixing some of the following, which are colors, hues, brightness, and saturation. And you'll take a look at these different representations shortly in a future video. However, the most common one and the easiest one for us to understand is the BGR, which is the blue, green, red, or RGB. BGR is what we say in OpenCV, that's what it stores it in. However, it's commonly stored as RGB. And what this means is that each pixel here, so imagine this is a pixel of an image. Imagine your screen is comprised of thousands of pixels here. You know, imagine we're breaking it down. We're just looking at 10 pixels by 10 pixels here. If you were to zoom into like the corner of your screen and with a magnifying glass, you would probably see the mixed individual arrays showing red, green, and blue. Now, how do we get white and different colors out of it? Well, it, it just means it's different brightness of or intensities of these three colors here mixing that gives us the color we want to see. So imagine in each pixel here, we store three values and these values range from zero to 255. 255 being the brightest, zero being the darkest, or essentially black at that point, because it's not this means totally off. And this this mixture here is what gives us our colors. So imagine now we want to get the color yellow out of these three colors. That's just red at max, green at max, and blue at zero. So that's pretty cool. So now if we wanted to create an image, something simple like this here, you can actually see the different mixtures we'd need to make this. This is all at max, all at max, all at max, max being 255. To get white, when I say all at max, we need red, green, and blue to be at 255. Green now, you can just reduce red and blue accordingly until you get a nice shade of green. Brown would be a different color. This is a yellow. So you can see how by mixing different colors, individual grid here, individual pixel points, you can generate nice images. So now imagine this is blown up to like thousand by a thousand and you have like almost a million pixels at that point. Actually, you would have a million pixels at that point. Then you can get complex images, high resolution images out of things like screens and tablets, displays and TVs and stuff. So that is core of how images are represented digitally. Now, let's talk a bit about arrays, because arrays are important in OpenCV, Python, and computer vision with understanding how images are actually stored. So firstly, let's take a look at this. This is a one-dimensional array. 
What this means here is just that we have a zero index. This means that there's a value here, a value here, and we index it by this first column number here. Now a two-dimensional array is like a table. We have different values here. We can have a value here, value here, value here, and this is like the index here. So we have two, one, three, two, that gives us a value here. So this is how we can represent images here. But how do we store three values in one spot? We have a three-dimensional array now. So this is essentially how a three-dimensional array can be visualized. So now we can see how like a display, we can store the different colors, these three colors here, to give us to put colors at our points here. So hope you understand this. Now, just so you know, in a black and white, or I should say a grayscale image, because black and white images are essentially just shades of gray, we don't need a three-dimensional array. We just need a two-dimensional array. So going back to it here, you can have one value here, and that value will give you a shade of gray that is from 0 to 255. That's the light, the darkest shade of gray at 0, and the, and the lightest shade at 255. So you can actually represent what we refer to as black and white images, which are really just grayscale images, like this. Now, let's take a look at what makes computer vision so hard. Now, before we get into what makes computer vision hard, let's just take some time to appreciate how good our brains are at vision. In fact, almost 20% or at least 20% of our brain is dedicated to visual processing. And that means that things that are super easy for us are now super hard for computer vision. And there are many factors that present challenges to computer vision. And these are things like camera sensor or lens limitations. You can see there's noise here. If it's too zoomed in, we can't actually make out what we're seeing. There's different viewpoint variations. This is all the Statue of Liberty at different angles. It's going to be tough for a computer to actually figure out it is, in fact, the Statue of Liberty. Changing light conditions. This is a view from my apartment during the daytime and during dusk. You can see how vastly different it looks, even though it is the same scene we're looking at. It's use of scale. This is the Taj Mahal zoomed out all the way and now close in. Is it the same building? I think it is, but is it really? There's non-rigid deformations. This is a horse galloping, this is a horse resting. Same for this dog here. They look so different. So non-rigid deformations are very complex for computer vision tasks as well. Things like occlusion. Remember this horse is partially hidden by these trees. Is it really a horse or is it multiple horses? What is it? Things like clutter. Figuring out that this is an octopus that's camouflaged amongst these stones is going to be pretty difficult. I mean, some humans might have this trouble with this, and some people will definitely have trouble finding, say, a specific sign in an image like this. This clutter presents a lot of difficulty. And then there are things like object class variation. Look how many different types of chairs there can be. This is just one sample search from Google Images, and there are tons of different chairs here. Likewise with dogs. Dog breeds are so different. You can have a pit bull or a chihuahua, both being classified as a dog, but they look entirely different. And then there's ambiguous optical illusions. Is this a wine glass or a vase, or is this two faces? Is this really alligators here, or is it a drawing? And what is this guy doing? Is he faking or not? We don't know. So what have we learned in this lesson? We've learned how images are represented digitally, that our brains are incredibly good at visual processing, and we've learned what makes computer vision so hard. So now let's move on to getting started with OpenCV in the next video. Thank you for watching.